and at a party where it's just people and it's not necessarily somebody that you're attracted to, the signal is, I am open, I'm communicative, I'm intelligent, I'm fun, and you want to talk to me, okay? And when it's somebody that you're attracted to, the signal is my door is open, I am available, I am interested, and I do want you to pursue me. So I'm giving you, I'm giving you courage to deal with two different situations, but you can use these tools with a little bit of a twist depending on each one. Yeah, <laughs> Sherry, that's right. Love the excitement. Love it. All right. So what the fuck is fear anyway, right? Me. I said that. I hope you guys enjoy that one. Anybody opposed to swearing, by the way, I need to know because I kind of let them fly and I know I shouldn't in a way because really like my long-term goal is like network TV. Like I really want to get out in front of the masses and I'm not, you know, sure how well they would judge me dropping swear words every now and then. Who knows? But I mean, it's me. I keep it real. Um, I, you know, try to keep it to a minimum. So let's get into the biology of fear, right? So let's understand what fear is because yes, I keep it real. I love it. Love it, ladies. I love you guys. Um, so basically fear is, is an automatic response, right? We needed to have fear. Love your power language, Kim. Love you, Kim. We evolved about 200,000 years ago. We were cavemen and cavewomen living in a jungle. It was a much more dangerous world and we needed to understand what to do to survive. And so fear is an automatic response. It lets us know in the moment, it communicates in the split seconds. Do you fight this? Do you have the strength? I mean, if it's the brown bear, do you fight or do you run, right? And your fear response, that automatic response, is going to tell you what to do. And so it is what kept us alive. Fear is the reason you and I are here today on this webinar talking about fear. It has a natural place within us. And, and I'll give you like an example. You know, I started all this working with dogs and I studied dog psychology and it was, it was understanding like wolf psychology to understand dog psychology that brought me into people psychology because I saw all these parallels. And one thing that we'll notice about puppies is, you know, up to eight weeks, they're fully exploratory very, very exploratory. There's very little of a fear response. We take them home at eight weeks. There's a little bit of a fear response kicking in, but we have a four week window between eight and 12 weeks to socialize this puppy. So zero to eight puppy needs to stay with mom. Eight to 12, we can take the puppy away, bring it into our pack, but we still need to show it the world. It still needs to understand that people are safe cars, you know, as long as you don't run out into traffic, the sound of cars are safe. You know, thunder is safe. Houses are safe. You need to put it in all kinds of different situations because after 12 weeks, anything it comes in contact with, it has a fear response. And the reason for that was that up until 12 weeks, the pup stayed relatively close to the den. But after 12 weeks was when it would start to wander out into the world. So anything it was introduced to before 12 weeks was generally safe because the den area was generally safe, right? The other wolves would kill any predators that would have eaten the pups if it came too close. But once it gets beyond the den and that's after 12 weeks, now it's more mobile and it's bigger and it really has an urge to get out because now it needs to go hunt. So after 12 weeks, when it meets something new, then the instinct is, what. Well, this is new, I should fear it because it might kill me, right? And that's where fear steps in with us too, is this is new and therefore I am uncomfortable because it might kill me. It's our lizard brain that says it might kill me. And you need to distinguish between reality and the emotion, that feeling. And you notice a lot of physical responses during fear, right? Like the heart starts beating hard, the stomach and knots. Maybe there's some shaking, there's some shortness in breath because you feel tight, you feel squeezed. Guys, I wanna see some feedback from you. What are some sensations that you have when you feel fear? 
Did I miss any? Did I get them bang on? Let me know. Like if I miss some, I want you to list them for me. What happens to you? Do you get a dry mouth? Uh, do you feel like there's a, is there a ringing in your ears? Like what are your physical responses to fear? Um, and if I've named them all, then just go bang on sister. Let me know what, how do you feel when you feel fearful? And these physical responses are caused by 30 chemicals that are released in your body. Heart rate shoots up, nausea, oh geez. Oh Deanna, that sucks. Yeah, Holly nauseated. Hi Holly, you're new. Good to see you, welcome, welcome. Um, what else, what else you guys? Yeah, so you know, like your your body goes, it goes into fight or flight mode, right? And that's what those 30 chemicals are. Um, fears like pounding heart and chest, short of breath, right? Like you have, you know, again, fight or flight is intense movement either way, right? And so you are filled with all these chemicals that, you know, mind goes blank. Yeah, not surprised there because you're supposed to be hyper focused when it comes to fear because you need to focus in on the problem so you can solve it like that right away, fight or flight, survival. And so your body is filled with all these chemicals, all these responses, right? That pounding of your heart is putting more oxygen in your bloodstream so you can run faster and be stronger, right? That nausea could be because you're actually not doing anything and you have all these chemicals overwhelming your system going do something and there's a cognitive dissonance inside of your system going on. Um, you know, brain freezes, we got another one of those, right? Hyper focus, right? Hyper focus. And so, you know, you really just get overwhelmed. Raquel, hi, Raquel. You get very overwhelmed. And so is anybody here meditating? Because meditation helps with that fear response because it shrinks your amygdala. The amygdala is the part of your brain that is associated to fight or flight. And when the amygdala shrinks, your capacity to feel those responses physically shrinks within your body. So if, if, Anyone is not meditating yet. And I know, I know, I was going to say, I know Sherry's meditating. High five, girlfriend. Kim, high five to you too. I know a couple of you are already on board. Deanna, yes. Oh, we got three out of seven. Let's see if there's more. Is anybody else meditating? Oh my God. I'm getting excited here. Okay. Listen, ladies, if you're not meditating yet and we got some ladies, can you, by the way, uh, Sherry, Kim, Deanna, let, write a little note to the other ladies here in the chat. Tell them, the change that you've had since you started meditating from, oops, I got so excited, from, you know, what it was, what your, what your emotions were to how you're feeling now that you're meditating, okay? Because let's see, <gasps> Qigong, uh, walking meditations, Kim, fantastic. Let's see if we can encourage these other four ladies to start meditating tonight, okay? Um, so teach them, Lily, hola, love it. Uh, so if you're not meditating yet, go to my YouTube channel, or if you don't know where it is, then go to YouTube, search Chantal Hyde. You're going to find my YouTube channel and click on playlist. You're going to find my Let's Meditate playlist. Now, the first video is a two minute tutorial. Listen, ladies, don't think meditation is hard. You have a vagina. The hardest thing about meditation is you thinking you need to clear your mind. Forget about that. You don't. All you need to do is pull your brain back to the space right in front of your eyes. Every time you realize you're off in thought, that fraction of a second that you're there, if that's, you know, if all it lasts is a fraction of a second, that fraction of a second shrinks your amygdala. You're going to go off in thought again. You're going to pull it back when you realize you're off in thought. Again, a further shrinkage of your amygdala, right? Every time you bring it back, you're going to shrink your amygdala a little bit more. I say to people, don't worry about how much you think. Give it the time. Because the music that I put on this playlist, they're binaural beats. And by the way, really go for the Rich Pendlebury music, which is the first stuff that's on my playlist because this guy is the crack cocaine of meditation music. He makes it so well. He is the chemist of meditation music. It is the best music. I'm hooked, absolutely hooked. Sherry from Headaches, 99% less anxiety, 
better handle of when it creeps in, uh, from a constant state of anxiety, tension, headaches all day, every day, to no headaches. I am so super proud of you. And let me tell you, uh, <clears throat> Sherry went from 10 minutes a day. Are you still doing 20 minutes a day, lovely? You were saying last time you're doing 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at night. Uh, day and night, difference in my gray matter, just do it. Yes, 100%. Thank you for your feedback on that. Thank you. Um, so basically, don't worry about how much you think. Just bring the focus back over and over again. Sherry, please tell them how easy it is because as long as you keep doing it, as long as you start with the minimum of 10 minutes a day, right? So the first track is a 10 minute love signal. Start with minimum 10 minutes a day. Go up if you want, but at least do 10 minutes a day. If you skip a day or two, make up the time, right? So you meditate today, but you didn't tomorrow, you didn't the day after. The day after that, you do 30 minutes because you've accumulated. You need to catch up to your time so that you're going to do that shrinkage of your amygdala. You're going to get this relief from this anxiety. Uh, Nina, watch your videos in the 10 minutes were good. 20 minutes, very difficult, hard towards the end, start to wander off. That's okay. That's okay, lovely. Just do as long as you can, as long as the minimum is 10 minutes. Uh, exactly, Sherry. It's easy if you don't worry about clearing your mind. You know, this, we're women. We have multitasking brains. I do not expect the unreasonable from you. Just give it the time. Um, so here's the thing. So that physical response, right? That um, your amygdala going, bloop, you know, blowing up and having that response, releasing all those chemicals in your body. I call it the sphincter clench moment, right? And you guys, like, you, <laughs> Do you know, I hope you, listen, if you don't know what a sphincter is, go look it up. I'm not telling you right now. And, and it just freezes you and it keeps you immobile and it keeps you from moving in the direction that you want to go in, which is towards the love interest that you are interested in, right? And if anything, it keeps you walking in the opposite direction or it keeps you staying with the bad ex. It keeps you making the safer decisions because you're afraid of what you haven't experienced yet. You're, you're that, that under socialized puppy. And, and I want you to understand that what is beyond fear is not as scary as you think it is. And I'm going to give you some tools. Meditation is the first one. So I hope you're doing notes for Kelly. Do 10 minutes a day. Remember myself on a chart with a green stone sticker. <laughs> Love that. Ladies, take notes. That is beautiful. That is amazing. So here is your first trick or tool. Your body, your body is your first trick or tool. It literally is. Now look at this, Wonder Woman, Superman, right? Like look at the pose that they have. Look at how they are standing. It is no mistake that superheroes stand with their back straight, with their shoulders back, with their arms wide, with their legs wide. This is literally called a power pose. Uh, Nina, I perform meditation after a stressful day at work, which is every day. That's, you know, it, this is, this is the medication that you need, right? It literally is. Ladies, we were, born in a jungle, we still have that lizard brain that says that we need to be alert and in survival mode, but our environment has changed and our brain has not caught up. And when we were in the jungle, we did meditative exercises. We hunted, we fished, we wove baskets, we picked berries, quiet, focused, repetitive exercises that relaxed our brain. And so meditation really is doing what is natural to us, which is balancing our brain back with, with relaxation to basically help us deal with this world that's around us. So Kim says, Lady Chantal taught me how to meditate when I was going through such a hard time after a terrible breakup, something that I thought I couldn't do, never realized how simple it was, really is, just give it the time. I was very consistent with meditation, but then fell through the cracks again and started crying or cycling back. Sorry. Chantal asked me if I was meditating and shamefully I said, no, it was the fix. It really is. I can always tell when my clients stop meditating because I get the distress calls. 
When I started meditating again, everything got easier in my life. Fight or flight response decreased and it was far less anxious. Chantal has an amazing YouTube Let's Meditate playlist. I really do. Uh, and it has helped me improve my everyday life so much. Please try it if you haven't already. Um, if I can, you can, right? And, and Kim has had a couple concussions. So, you know, she certainly is working with a brain that sometimes works against her. And, and so, you know, when Kim says, if I can do it, you can too, she really means that.